Hi folks, this is your host Mandeep and today I'll do a session on uh, how I day trade. So this is just a methodology that I end up using and uh, by no means, uh, you know, this is the only way to trade. Uh, you know, there's a number of different ways uh, you can skin a cat. Likewise, uh, there's many different ways you can make money on uh, Wall Street. Uh, many people trade purely on fundamental data. Uh, some people trade on uh, a certain set of technicals that they like and um, other people trade on just uh, pure flow of options. Right. So uh, so what I will do is just share, uh, you know, how, how I approach my day trading day and uh, what are some of the key things that uh, I look at and um, so I've been, you know, trading in channel for about uh, 15 to 20 years and uh, full time for the last uh, two and a half, three years. And what I've done is I've developed a methodology which is predicated on the concept of multi time framing. So instead of relying on just one single um, indicator, I used a, a host of indicators about uh, uh, you know, a dozen and I use them on multiple uh, you know, time frames. So I get confirmations from four different time frames um, in order to arrive at uh, a buying or a selling decision. Now clearly if you're eyeballing and you're using uh, horizontal lines or you know wedges or uh, other techniques uh, you know to figure breakouts um, that's one way of trading uh, but when you are using an automated methodology uh, it gives you um, uh, you know the opportunity to uh, you know put in many different checks and balances um, into uh, place so that uh, you can stack the probability in your favor um, as much as possible so that's in uh, essence what this uh, technique does. But uh, what we will talk about how I approach my uh, trading day, uh, and this is really pertinent to short term trading. This is really not uh, you know very relevant if you're doing intermediate or long term uh, you know trading where you rely more on fundamental data. Right here you're looking for patterns, you're looking at momentum, you're looking to see which stocks are breaking out. You're trying to figure out where the institutional interest is. Right. So what I do is I basically, you know, uh, focus on the sector performance to start with, right? When you look at the sector performance here, we can, um, and what I've done is I've added uh, a column called percentage change, which tells me uh, the percentage uh, for the day. So this is just predicated for one day. And uh, these are all the sectors that I'm looking at, right? So this is the internet index, the utilities and um, you know, there's real estate index and oil and consumer discretionary software sector, so on and so forth, right? So you know all uh, the common sectors that exist, right? So the first thing I do is that, you know, I sort them out by a uh, change of uh, percentage for the given day, right? So as I see on the top, um, and I click on this, this is the Dow Jones US Internet Index. And uh, now we see at the bottom, we have the regional banks, then we have the, uh, the big banks, right? Like the JP Morgans and uh, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, etc. They're part of this, right? We also see the, um, the oil index and uh, the energy sector, etc. are also at the bottom. Now, if you're looking for short opportunities, you would start to focus on uh, the sectors that are, uh, you know, on the the low side from a percentage standpoint. But if you're going in uh, on the long side, right, which um, most people tend to trade generally, take long trades. But if you're day trading, of course, you know, uh, you you mix up uh, with you know both long and short term uh, trades. So as you can see that the. Uh, Dow Jones Internet Index was ranked the number uh, the one sector and for those of those of you who don't know um, you, know, you, you can actually just google it and there's many different sites but in this case we can see these are the main holdings of that is Amazon Facebook Netflix and you know Google etc right so the next step that I do is then uh, I have a dynamic list and this dynamic list is uh, you know, self-adjusting. It, it is actually created. It will adjust itself on uh, you know day-to-day -day basis depending upon the market conditions in which stocks are really outperforming the market. And um, so, in essence, it's looking at stocks that are trading higher than the high of the previous month, higher than the high of the previous week, higher than the high of the you know previous day. So, when you look at it on a 10 or 15 minute time frame, and if that jives, then you know you essentially put the uh, probability in your favor because the bigger time frames are in your favor anyway so 
since we were looking at the internet uh, index as the the best performing sector you know you have stocks uh, a number of stocks from that list and uh, so that sort of piques my interest the other thing i do is um, i have two columns um, that i pay attention to one is uh, the first one is a dynamic orb which basically looks at uh, the opening range breakout you know for the first 15 minutes then it resets and then looks for the breakout for the first 30 minutes and then finally for the uh, hour and the second thing i plot is the relative volume and uh, the thinker swim doesn't give you any way of uh, you know plotting the relative volume and what you really want to know is early on in the day uh, if the volume is outpacing uh, the typical volume it does at that time of the day right so for example in the first 15 minutes if it does about uh, you know four percent we're essentially looking for stocks that are trading at least 20 percent higher in terms of volume right so once you identify that that gives you an edge because that gives you the institutional interest uh, and uh, perhaps the focus is on those stocks right so as i said you know you've already identified the sector and now you drill down on the stock so in this case uh, since netflix is part of the sector and uh, its volume was already high so that uh, certainly piqued my interest and uh, then we take a look at that and you know one of the things i use is my own methodology which i've written which is called the uts day and uh, swing trade right so this can be used for both uh, day trading as a as well as for swing trading purposes right and one of the things this will do is uh, uh, it'll actually give you um, uh, both uh, a buy uh, buy signal as well as when to you know close the trade so in this case we can see that the buy came at about 650 about 20 minutes after the market uh, opened pacific standard time you got a buy signal and then you got uh, a close signal at the end of the day the reason uh, you got a close signal is because i've set this strategy to uh, day trade but if it was set for swing trading then um, this trade this trade would obviously carry on to the next day but by right clicking on this we can you know generate a show report and see exactly what happened so as you can see we had a buy to open signal uh, that uh, happened at 7 a.m in the morning uh, and the price of the stock uh, was uh, 459 dollars and then when it closed uh, the trade which is sell to close we closed it at 487 for a net profit of uh, approximately 2800 dollars right so now uh, we can look at uh, some of the other stocks uh, as well clearly tesla is not part of the internet index but since it was uh, um, you know traded heavily and this is very close to high volume as well almost close 20 percent higher than normal volume so this one also had uh, you know a fair bit of interest uh, because of option flow and also because of these uh, trades that we can see so let's take a look at this one um, and we'll right click on this and see uh, show report and uh, you know as you can see this one triggered a buy at 6 40 uh, a.m which is 10 minutes after the market opened pacific standard time closing two hours later for a profit of 1952 right um, amazon had uh, really uh, a tremendous volume as well today and uh, for those of you who kept track uh, th this made a really nice move today and uh, let's take a look at uh, um, how this ended up doing so i'm just going to right click on that and you can see there's two trades that triggered on this um, and uh, as you can see this had a trade of seven thousand uh, dollars a lot of people of course can't afford to trade hundred shares on amazon but you know you can do the math if you did a quarter or even less and and there was another trade of two grand so uh, assuming you traded hundred shares which is what it defaults to you ended up uh, making a profit of uh, nine thousand the, the other stock that's also part of the um, internet index is uh, obviously uh, Google and uh, Google had one trade that triggered and uh, we'll right click on this and uh, take a look at the show report and this one had about a $1400 profit um, uh, today as well. Now most of these stocks as I said uh, you know uh, I'll, I'll become a part of this list because of uh, some dynamic code um, that I have uh, that is uh, you know uh, adjusting itself uh, each day so depending on which stocks are currently um, have uh, a momentum phase will show up in in this list 
So, so it's possible that you know Amazon and Tesla and many of these stocks may continue their momentum tomorrow. So they'll again be a, a part of the list, right? So this is sort of a, kind of a quick view of how I uh, you know approach uh, my day trades because I want this process to be extremely simple. I want this to be efficient. I want this to be repeatable, right? Because uh, each morning when I'm trading. And there would be days when there's, uh, um, you know, dozens of stocks in that list. I have to find a way of filtering it, right? Because if I, if there's too many stocks and I, I don't have a sub filter, then you know I'll be, you know, uh, clicking through uh, several of these stocks to see in which ones I'd buy. But today, uh, you know, if, if I uh, look at it, I had, you know, maybe five or six stocks where I could have, uh, you know, just clicked and see if a buy signal came or not. So this one had to to buy signals as well right so so that's a quick um, overview of how i approach uh, day trading and if you have any questions feel free to leave leave a comment um, in uh, the comment section and i'll be uh, sure to uh, get back to you now uh, you all have a safe and enjoyable uh, july 4th holiday and i'll talk to you soon take care bye bye